Doom. Or should I say, the Doom fire screen. An awesome visualization of fire that is as profoundly simplistic as it is wonderful to the eye. I based much of this code off Fabian Sanglard's website, which is linked in the description below. Now let's get to coding this awesome fire screen. We will be building off the code from my previous fixed time step loop video, and our first order of business is to move the timing and looping logic into its own files. I've opted to put all of them in a module I called engine, and simply pass our update and draw loops as function pointers to the main engine looping code. That should clean up our working area. Now that all the looping logic is moved to the engine files, our main code is nice and clean. To test that it works, we simply output to the console in each loop. And there's our output as expected, so it's working well. Let's move on to using SDL to create a window and render some actual graphics instead of just console output. We extend our setup function to load SDL and create a window and a renderer to draw to. Then create a teardown function to unload SDL. And then create a pull events function that can listen to events from the window or button presses so we can close the window when we feel like it. Then we wrap our draw function in code that clears the rendering buffer and pushes any changes to the screen. In between these two portions we can write any draw code we want. We test that it's working by outputting a dark red background to the window. With all that out of the way, we can code our fire. We define an array of RGB values that represent the spectrum of colors across the flames, from dark gray to hot white, with reds and oranges in the middle. They look a lot like this. We define another array to represent the 2D grid of fire cells. Each cell is an X, Y coordinate on the screen, and we can use some basic math to transform a row or column coordinate into an index in our array. This grid will house the colors of our flames that change as the flames ascend upward across the screen. We then write some code to initialize our grid, all cells starting at our blackest color, and then the last row starting as our white hot color, which will be the initiator of our fire. Then we write the function to spread our fire. The concept is simple. Take a pixel and look at its neighbor up one row. Then dim that neighbor by one degree of color. This produces the effect of fire dimming as it travels up the screen. To draw this, we can simply loop across our cells and draw an SDL rectangle for each grid cell, coloring it based on its value in our RGB palette. After a little debugging, we need to make sure that our topmost row of fire doesn't overflow and spread to our bottommost row. This would cause the fire to douse itself immediately. We can do this by skipping the top row of cells in our update loop. After that, we have some success. Somewhat. The fire now travels up the screen, diminishing as it goes, though the effect is a little lackluster. It's a simple linear gradient, like a perfect fire in a vacuum. A real fire is affected by air in the environment, which we can simulate with some basic randomization. Let's start by randomizing which upper neighbor the fire will spread to. Now that looks a little better. The fire at least travels upward at different rates, but I think we can do better. Let's try also randomizing the spread laterally, picking a random leftward neighbor as well as a random upward neighbor. Voila! Now that's some solid doom fire right there. Let's take this one step further by removing our pixel padding and adding the ability to douse and start the flames again. We can do this by polling for keyboard presses. If A is pressed, we can douse the bottom row of fire by a few pixels of darkness. Repeated presses will eventually douse the row entirely. 
If S is pressed, we can restart the flames by igniting the bottom row back to hot white. And there we have it. We can douse the flames and restart the flames as much as we want. As usual, you can find links to the source code in the description, as well as a link to Fabian's website where more details can be found about this algorithm. I'm sure there are a ton of interesting variations you can come up with on your own, and I'd like to hear about them in the comments if you feel up to it. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. You guys get out there and code. <laughs>